a blonde was down on her luck. In order to raise some money, she decided to kidnap a kid and hold him for ransom. She went to the playground, grabbed a kid, took him behind a tree, and told him, I've kidnapped you. She then wrote a note saying, I've kidnapped your kid. Tomorrow morning put $10,000 in a paper bag and put it under the pecan tree next to the slide on the north side of the playground. Signed, a blonde. The blonde then pinned the note to the kid's shirt and sent him home to show it to his parents. The next morning the blonde checked, and sure enough, a paper bag was sitting beneath the pecan tree. The blonde opened up the bag and found the $10,000 with a note that said, How could you do this to a fellow blonde? Five Scotsmen in an Audi Quattro arrived at an Irish border checkpoint. Paddy, the officer, stops them and tells them, it is illegal to put five people in a Quattro, Quattro means four. Quattro is just the name of the automobile, the Scotsmen retort in disbelief. Look at the papers, this car is designed to carry five persons. You cannot pull that one on me, replies Paddy. Quattro means four. You have five people in your car, and you are therefore breaking the law. The Scotsmen reply angrily, you idiot. Call your supervisor over. I want to speak to someone with more intelligence. Sorry, responds Patty, Murphy is busy with two guys in a Fiat Uno. <laughs> Three friends are in a hotel room in Soviet Russia. The first two men open a bottle of vodka, while the third is tired and goes straight to bed. He is unable to sleep, however as his increasingly drunk friends tell political jokes loudly. After a while, the tired man gets frustrated and walks downstairs for a smoke. He stops in the lounge and asks the receptionist to bring tea to their room in five minutes. The man walks back into the room, joins the table, leans towards a power outlet, and speaks into it. Comrade Major, we want some tea to room 62 please. His friends laugh on the joke, until there is a knock on the door. The receptionist brings a teapot. His friends fall silent and pale, horrified of what they just witnessed. The party is dead, and the man goes to sleep. After a good night's rest, the man wakes up and notices his friends are gone. Surprised, he walks downstairs and asks the receptionist where they went. The nervous receptionist whispers that KGB came and took them before dawn. The man is horrified. He wonders why he was spared. The receptionist responds, Well, Comrade Major did quite like your tea joke. <laughs> Two bowling teams, one of all blondes and one of all brunettes, charter a double-decker bus for a weekend bowling tournament in London. The brunette team rides in the bottom of the bus. The blonde team rides on the top level. The brunette team down below is living it up having a great time when one of them realizes she doesn't hear anything from the blondes upstairs. She decides to go up and investigate. When the brunette reaches the top, she finds all the blondes frozen in fear, staring straight ahead at the road, and clutching the seats in front of them with white knuckles. She says, what the heck's going on up here? We're having a grand time downstairs. One of the blondes looks up and says, yeah, but you've got a driver. An American woman goes to Italy on business and asks her husband what she could bring back for him. He laughs and says, An Italian girl. When she returns home, he picks her up at the airport and asks, So, honey, how was the trip? Very good. She replies, And did you bring something home for me? Something did I forget? She asks, The Italian girl I asked for. He replies jokingly, Oh, that. She says, Well, I did what I could. Now we just have to wait five months to see if it's a girl. <laughs> a man met a beautiful girl and he decided he wanted to marry her right away. She protested, but we don't know anything about each other. He replied, That's all right, we'll learn about each other as we go along. So she consented and they were married, and they went on honeymoon to a very nice resort. One morning, they were lying by the pool when he got up off his towel, climbed up to the 30-foot high board and did a two-and-a-half tuck gainer, entering the water perfectly, almost without a ripple. This was followed by three rotations in jackknife position before he again straightened out and cut the water. 
like a knife. After a few more demonstrations, he came back and lay down on his towel. She said, that was incredible. He said, I used to be an Olympic diving champion. You see, I told you we'd learn more about ourselves as we went along. So she got up, jumped in the pool and started doing laps. She was moving so fast that the ripples from her pushing off at one end of the pool would hardly be gone before she was already touching the other end of the pool. After about 30 laps, completed in mere minutes, she climbed back out and lay down on her towel, barely breathing hard. He said, that was incredible. Were you an Olympic endurance swimmer? No, she said, I was a prostitute in Venice and I worked both sides of the canal. A young girl, who was writing a paper for school, came to her father and asked, Dad, what is the difference between anger and exasperation? The father replied, It is mostly a matter of degree. Let me show you what I mean. With that, the father went to the telephone and dialed a number at random. As a man answered the phone, he said, Hello, is Melvin there? The man answered, There is no one living here named Melvin. Why don't you learn to look up numbers before you dial them? See, said the father to his daughter. That man was not a bit happy with our call. He was probably very busy with something, and we annoyed him. Now watch this. The father dialed the same number again. Hello, is Melvin there? Asked the father. Now look here, came the heated reply. You just called this number, and I told you that there is no Melvin here. You've got a lot of nerve calling again. The receiver was then slammed down hard. The father turned to his daughter and said, You see, that was anger. Now I'll show you what exasperation means. He dialed the same number again, and a violent voice roared. Hello? The father then calmly said, Hello, this is Melvin. Have there been any calls for me? A girl with tight skirt tries to get on a bus. In a crowded city at a busy bus stop, a woman who was waiting for a bus was wearing a tight leather skirt. As the bus stopped and it was her turn to get on, she became aware that her skirt was too tight to allow her leg to come up to the height of the first step of the bus. Slightly embarrassed and with a quick smile to the bus driver, she reached behind her to unzip her skirt a little, thinking that this would give her enough slack to raise her leg. Again, she tried to make the step only to discover she still couldn't. So, a little more embarrassed, she once again reached behind her to unzip her skirt a little more. For the second time she attempted the step, and once again, much to her chagrin, she could not raise her leg. With a little smile to the driver, she again reached behind to unzip a little more and again was unable to make the step. About this time, a large Texan who was standing behind her picked her up easily by the waist and placed her gently on the step of the bus. She went ballistic and turned to the would-be Samaritan and screeched, How dare you touch my body? I don't even know who you are. The Texan smiled and drawled, Well, ma'am, normally I would agree with you, but after you unzipped my fly three times, I kind of figured we are friends. Son. Daddy, I fell in love and want to date this awesome girl. Father. That's great, son. Who is she? Son. It's Sandra, the neighbor's daughter. Father. Oh, I wish you hadn't said that. I have to tell you something, son, but you must promise not to tell your mother. Sandra is actually your sister. The boy is naturally bummed out, but a couple of months later. Son. Daddy, I fell in love again and she is even hotter. Father. That's great, son. Who is she? Son. It's Angela, the other neighbor's daughter. Father. Oh, I wish you hadn't said that. Angela is also your sister. This went on a few more times, and finally the son was so mad, he went straight to his mother crying. Son. Mom, I am so mad at dad. I fell in love with six girls and I can't date any of them because dad is their father. The mother hugs him affectionately and says, You can date whoever you want. He is not your father. <laughs> there once was this guy who was going on a date to the movies with a beautiful girl. Before he went, he made the mistake of eating a jumbo can of beans. Right after he picked her up, he felt the need to fart 
but he figured he could wait until they got to the movies. When they got there, he asked her if she wanted some popcorn and coke. She said sure, so he went to the restroom. The line was long, so he went back to the lobby, got the food, and went back into the theater. When the movie was over, he goes to the bathroom again, still with a tremendously long line. So he figures he can wait until he drops her off. When they pull up into her driveway, she exclaims, Oh goody! My grandparents are here. Come on in and meet them. He agrees, although he is about to cry at this point. They go in and sit down at the table. Finally, he couldn't hold it in any longer and tried to let it seep out a little at a time. As he squeezed out a toxic blast, he aimed it towards the family's hound dog Duke, in hopes that they might blame the pooch for the horrendous fart. The girl's father stands up and hollers, Duke! and sits back down. Great! he thought. They really think it's the dog. So, he starts bombarding the room with a couple, more powerful, louder stinkers. Once again, the girl's father stands up, shouts, Duke! and sits back down. Finally, he lets it all go and the loudest, most hair-curling fart you've ever heard or smelled rippled through the dining room. The girl's father stands up again. Duke, get the out from under him before he shits on you. A small boy was awoken in the middle of the night by strange noises from his parents' room, and he decided to investigate. As he entered their bedroom, he was shocked to see his mom and dad shagging for all they were worth. Dad, he shouted. What are you doing? It's okay, his father replied. Your mother wants a baby, that's all. The small boy, excited at the prospect of a new baby brother, was pleased and went back to bed with a smile on his face. Several weeks later, the little boy was walking past the bathroom and was shocked to discover his mother giving oral gratification to his father. Dad, he shouted. What are you doing now? Son, there's been a change of plan, his father replied. Your mother did want a baby, but now she wants a BMW. <laughs> a mom visits her son for dinner who lives with a girl as a roommate. During his meal, his mother couldn't help but notice how pretty his roommate was. She had long been suspicious of a relationship between the two and this had only made her more curious. Over the course of the evening while watching the two interact, she started to wonder if there's more between him and his roommate. Reading his mom's thought, his son volunteered, I know what you must be thinking, but I assure you, we are just roommates. About a week later, his roommate came to him, saying, Ever since your mother came to dinner, I've been unable to find the silver plate. You don't. Suppose your mother took it, do you? He said, Well, I doubt it, but I'll email her just to be. Sure. He sat down and wrote, Dear Mom, After your visit me, the silver plate has been missing. I'm not saying that you did take the silver plate from my house, and I'm not saying that you don't take it. But the fact remains that it has been missing ever since you were here for dinner. Love. Your son. Several days later, he received an email from his mother which read, Dear son, I'm not saying that you do sleep with your roommate, and I'm not saying that you don't sleep with her, but the fact remains that if she was sleeping, in her own bed, she would have found the silver. Plate by now, under her pillow. Love. Mom. A girl is walking through a cemetery at night. She's a little nervous because it's dark, but it's the shortest way to get to her home. Suddenly, she hears a distinct tapping noise from the graves on her left. Her heart almost stops as she pauses mid-step. She hears it again, tap, tap, tap. She screams and starts running down the path. After a while, she stops to catch her breath. This is silly, she thinks to herself, there must be a rational explanation. She slowly retraces her steps and walks towards the direction of the sound, tap, tap, tap. There, sitting on a grave, is a gentle old man with a small hammer and chisel. He is tapping out an inscription on the tombstone. Phew. You scared me, the girl says, relieved upon seeing him. 
What are you carving there? The old man turns to her and smiles. I'm just correcting the spelling of my name. <laughs> hey, there, I put a lot effort into making these videos so please subscribe for more jokes and stay happy, thank you.